Good morning, friends. Welcome to another Tea Time with Tracy. Cheers. Where we have a talk, have a chat, and talk about topics that are either come to me or are given to me by you, the people who are viewing this in the comments section below. I have um, lately been using this channel to recommend and talk about books that I have been reading. I am an avid book reader. I love reading anything from self-help to even stories where, which I am reading today, stories of people's lives, true life stories. Uh, I enjoy them as well, especially the when they uplift and move your spirit. I'm all for that. I have just read uh, Dying to Be Me by Anita Manjori. I'm probably brutalizing her last name and I'm sorry if I am. Her story is amazing. It's about uh, having cancer and coming back from cancer um, or any kind of sickness basically. And it is, uh, she talks about in the book I can give you a little bit. She talks about in the book where um, she lived her life with uh, fear um, and, you know, just suppressed because of religious beliefs, cultural beliefs, etc. What you know, whatever we we go through in our life um, and in our in our journey through childhood to adulthood, the beliefs that we have mold us, shape us, and we do change. So she was diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer. Um, she survived four years with the disease. Finally, her, her body just broke down and said, I'm, I'm done, I've had enough. She went into a coma, 30 hours in a coma. She's seen everything that was happening around her. Um, and you hear stories about that all the time, right? You hear stories about people saying that they felt the presence of their, their loved ones or they've even hovered above their body and seen what was going on. She saw her husband, Danny, talking to a doctor 40 feet down the hallway. When she came out of it, she explained to her husband and the doctor, which she had never seen, but she knew who he was when he walked in the room. And that shocked him in itself. Then she had uh, explained what they were talking about. And it kind of blew their mind because there's no way. And even the husband, her husband, Danny said, there's no way you could have known what we were talking about. There's no way. So the fact that she could uh, remember things that were happening around her just proved to the doctors and the nurses that you know, she, even though she was in the coma, she was alert there and just knowing everything that was going on around. Um, she seen the nurse that was giving her intravenous. She stated that it sounded like the nurse had given up because he couldn't find, he couldn't find a vein to um, put the intravenous into, um, which upset, which upset her even in the coma. And later on when, when she told the story to her brother and she told the story to everybody actually uh, her brother was in the room and he went and told the nurse he says you know you got to be careful what you say because they actually hear you and the the nurse was astounded so I mean that changed that person that nurse's life too knowing that you know even though you walk into a room where someone is not physically there, um, even dementia patients, um, you they can't respond to you. But you know what? They know your presence. They know how you are with them. They know how you act around them. They can feel that, you know. And I've always said, you know, being um, being that I have done nursing. Um, Treat people the way you want to be treated, you know, and treat them as if they are your loved one. They're your, they're your dad. They're your mom. Treat them that way and you will never, ever go wrong. Um, treat people with kindness and love. Show them that. Anyway, back to the story 
Um, yeah, her, her organs, while she was in the coma, of course, her organs had shut down. They were shutting down and they had shut down. Coming out of the coma, two days later, her organs had were functioning again. Uh, three days later, the tumors had visibly shrunk. And she kept telling the doctors, you can take the tubes out. You can, I'm cured. You can take the tubes out. From this book, um, I have, uh, I learned a lot in the fact that um, my dad had had cancer. Um, and from her perspective, basically my dad's perspective, on um, having his, his lungs, his lungs like her, were filling with um, mucus and, and liquid. And basically she was drowning. And that's what was happening to my dad. And he had to have them tapped, which means they put a big needle in and they a syringe and they take the, the liquid out. Well, I, I don't like I didn't know at the time when I when I was um, when I seen this book on the internet being talked about by Dr. Dyer that I needed to read this book. Um, um, it it really helped me see my dad's side of it um, more so and seeing seeing from his perspective what um, he was going through helped me again with a little bit more of healing that I've had. I still I still suffer um, which I you know I shouldn't be because knowing what I know what she has said in the book about you know the other place there is no suffering. If anything, if you read the book and you real and you've had um, someone go through cancer or any kind of suffering, it will help you just knowing that it'll help you just knowing that on the other side there is no suffering, and no matter what, you know, there's love. That's it. She said when she, um, when she, and I want to say passed away because she didn't, she was still, you know, in between, in the in between. Um, she said all she felt was love. She, she felt everybody else is hurting around her. She felt that, um, but she just felt love. She, she saw her dad. She saw her, I wouldn't say saw, I shouldn't be careful. She didn't, she felt the presence of her dad. She felt the presence of her friend that had just passed away as well from cancer. She felt their presence, um, which in, in her case told her that it's not her time. She had to go back and she didn't want to because of the, the amount of love and the amount of um, uh, just compassion, everything. She couldn't even explain it in the book, what it felt like to her. She just didn't feel like she wanted to come back to a, a body that was um, not healthy and not whole. Um, there is a couple of quotes, though, that I'm going to have to read in my book here. I know a lot of people, even in, in the book she stated, she found uh, that a lot of people would feel it would be hard for them to understand. Um, she found herself finding compassion for criminals and terrorists because um, she felt they were all victims as well. Called she called it mental cancer. You can't you can't heal from that because society uh, treats them that way. We haven't created a society that promotes both mental and physical health. The infinite self is where we have our instincts and our intuition. And we should really, really tap into that. Um, it's it's a purely a gut feeling, no logical reason that we can explain. That's our intimate self. If you want to say soul, um, that's yourself. That's your, that's you. You know, and, and everybody wants to get back to that. Um, blocking our feeling also breaks down our awareness of our magnificence because emotions are the doorway into the soul. Um, 
and not allowing yourself to feel sad, feel happy, have those emotions, pushing them down because you want to make everybody else happy, that's not good for you. That's not good for your soul, your your infinite self. You know, in this stage in my body, that's what I've been that's what I was doing. I was people pleasing. I forgot who I was and and when I read that in the book, it just the bell went off and it hit home. I was like, I understand what you're saying. Uh, blocking your feelings to make everybody else happy is just not good for your soul. Also, when she said, um, when we realize our magnificence and live in our true nature of love, we'll attract the right teacher, book, or spiritual philosophy at the right time. If, if things come to you and you're like, uh-huh, it's the right time. And when it comes to you in the right time, it means that you are ready for that. You're ready for that step. You're ready for that, that attraction. And what you need is to, is to get yourself whole, get yourself, what you, what you have to do is get yourself to a place where you're ready for that. You're ready for that acceptance. You're ready for it to attract, to attract the good and to attract what makes you you do your passion as long as it doesn't um hurt others which i'm saying do something that you used to do that made you happy something that you enjoy self i i do i exercise i take care of my health and it it's it's what works for me what makes you happy what makes what gives you passion in life do that I'm going to end it here. I am very glad that it came to me at, at this right time. I am uh, starting my new uh, book. It's called The Magician. I read the first one last year in Kabul. It was called The Alchemist. And The Alchemist, it's like five book series. The Alchemist is the one which got me started with tea time with Tracy. Um, I, there's a couple of things that when I, when I do figure it out, you know, to, I still have lots of years left when I do figure it out. There's a th couple of things that I'd like to do in my life that, um, it will, it has sparked something. That book has sparked something in me that I, I definitely want to do in my life and uh, yeah so join me on this journey if you want if you want to start with the alchemist it's the very first book of the series um, this is, uh, Nicholas Flamel he actually did exist way back when it was he's an actual person um, which is kind of it's kind of exciting um, that's why I, in, it's, it's fiction, some of it's fiction, but the fact that it was an actual person is, um, it's exciting to me. Anyway, um, I'm starting this book. I'm taking a couple of them. I'm taking this one and, um, uh, and the Sorceress. I think that's the next book in the series. I think so, but I'm going to take two of them, um, because who knows, I might, I might just enjoy this so much that I might finish it in a month for sure. So I'm going to take this one and another one. But anyway, so that's it. Thank you, friends, for listening to this rant. <laughs> and uh, I enjoy having, having this uh, coffee tea time with all my friends. And I will be in Cabo um, for the next month so I don't know if there'll be a tea time but I will be vlogging on my other channel and uh, it is going to be a fitness as well I'm going to show you what I do in Cabo to stay healthy and happy and uh, that is my 
that is my um, spiritual place. I, I love it. A lot of people go to Cabo to drink and to have a good time, which is what people do. I mean, you got to go somewhere and you got to enjoy it and you got to enjoy yourself, right? For me, um, been there, done that. I've drank the juice, drank the Kool-Aid, and now I'm done. But if, uh, if that's what you want to do, it is a beautiful place for that too. Anyway, so cheers. Thank you for joining me on this tea time. And I look forward to the next tea time. And if it is in Cabo, great. If not, I'll see you back here at the house. Till next time. Love you, friends.